Now, validation rules. Now, what is this validation rule? Validation rule is nothing but while submitting the record, whether it could be a new record or an old record. Whatever the record you are submitting it, when you are submitting the record and during that time, we wanted to validate the data, validate the data. Now, validating the data is there are two types of, two ways you can validate it. One is just in the client side, just in the client side, whatever the data is entered, at the same time, I wanted to validate it. Or else, go to the server side and then validate it. So, validation can be done in the two ways. One is client validation and server side validation. Client validation is nothing but on the browser. Server side is nothing but where it will go to the database and talk to the database and it will respond back. Now, right now, what are the validation that we are going to do with the Salesforce is client side validation. We are going to do the client side validation in Salesforce. Just using the configuration part of it, then we will be doing the validation. Let's say I have a UI which is says account report, account name, rating, industry, revenue and click on the save and cancel button. All right. So when we click on this, this is a client. That means on the UI itself, as soon as the user enters certain data here, if I click on the save, immediately it will show an error here saying that there is an error. There is an error. It will show what is whatever the validation is there, it will show the error here. If it is a server side, once you click on this save, it should go to the server and talk to the server and then come back to, from the server and display the information on the client, so which is server side. How to see the validations, how to create a validation in Salesforce? Let's go to the setup. And let's take a object and go to the account. Validation rules can be implemented on the standard object as well as the custom object. So you will have an option which is called as a validation rules. In the object manager, go to the account and below you will have a validation rules. So click on this validation rule and click on the new button. So when you click on the new button, it will ask you that what is the validation rule that you wanted to implement. Let's say I wanted to implement now on the account. Let's go and check. We have a certain fields are available on the account. Let's say account number. Now account number should be a numeric and it should not be a blank. It should not be a blank and it should be a numeric. Now, for that scenario, let's say check or a validate account. Validate account number. So the scenario is account number should not be a null. As well as it should be a number. Should be number. So while creating or updating, while creating or updating, cross verify the account number field and it should not be a, it should not be a null and should be a number. Now, this is the requirement. Now we will go to the validation rule. When we go to the validation rule, now in the validation rule, you have a, error condition formula. In the error condition formula, you have a, whatever the data you wanted, whatever the condition you wanted to enter, you will enter the condition here. In order to enter the condition, the functions are going to help. These functions are generic functions. So you have a mathematical function, logical function, date time function, text function, advanced function. 
So these functions are going to help you in order to write the logic here. And if you want to build, insert any fields of the, this particular object, click on this insert field and then select the which are the one you wanted. Let's say I wanted to play with account number. So click on insert. So we have a account number. Now, if you want to check the what are the logic you have written, whether the logic is written correct or not. So check syntax. So check syntax is going to give you the, if there are any syntax errors are there, then it is going to give you the syntax errors here. And if there is a, like this is the formula field. So on the record, if the user has not entered the value or it's not entered in a proper way. So what is the error message do you wanted to show? So that error message, you will be placing it here. And do you want to show the error message on the top of the page or just on the field level? If you want to show it on the just a field level account number or a top of the page. So this is total information on the validation rule. Now let's say here I wanted to first check whether the is this account number should not be null. Now if it is should not be null. Now in that case I'll check here we have a certain functions which is called as a is blank and is null. Two are there. Is blank and is null. Both are there. Is null is just it is going to work for the numbers. When you have a data type, is null used when you have a data type as a number. When you have a data type as a number for that particular field. So when you are creating the field, if you have created the field, let's say account number or else employee ID. If you have given the employee ID, data type is number, then is null works for only number. Whereas is blank, it is going to work for the number as well as the alphabetic. That means if you have created the employee ID, data type is a text, right? Then use the is blank. Use the is blank. Do not use the is null for the text. Is null is only for the numbers. Is blank is for the text as well as the numbers. Both it will work. So right now I wanted to cross verify whether the account number is blank or not. So I'm going to take is blank and the expression. I'm just going to add the expression here is blank and expression is nothing but the account number. So first let's check the syntax. Now the syntax is no error. Now along with this, I also want to add another condition saying that it should be a numeric. Whatever the data you are entering in the account number, just enter the numbers. Do not enter the alpha. Like here we have a empty, right? It should be a number. Now, if you want to add it, now let's check here is number. There is a is number, right? So I'm going to check here insert is number. Is number, we need to pass the text. Now, this is one condition. This is another condition. Let's click on check syntax. What it says, error extra is number. That means there is no separation here. Either you place a operator which is called as a and. Either you place a operator called and condition. Or else you just use the function instead of this and condition comma and you have a function called and so use the and condition and within the and condition just place these values check the syntax This is blank. No error found. Right? So the error message, if it is a only number, now what is happening here? If it is a blank, if it is only number, it will give an error. But what is our condition? Our condition is if they enter alpha numeric, if they enter alpha numeric, then we wanted to show. But in this case, what is happening? I'm just checking if it is a number. If it is a number, show the error message. 
Now let me show you there is something wrong here, but I wanted to show you what will happen here. Let's say, please enter account number. Only numbers. Only numbers. Now click on save. Let's edit this. Now click on your save. It will give you the error. Now I'll change this. It should be only number. Click on this save. Now here, we are saying that if it is a blank or if it is a number. Now what is this? My condition is Like it should not be blank, right? It should not be blank. Blank. So when we say it should not be blank, that means I need to use a not condition here. I need to use not condition. So we have a not. Use the not condition and then place this if it is a not a blank. If it is not a blank and if it is not a number. If it is not a number. Now click on this save. Now click on this edit and let's save. So first condition is satisfied if it is a not a blank and if it is a not a number. Now here in this scenario, I'm checking the and condition. Let's say I wanted to go for a or condition. Throw me an error if it is is number and account number. So here I'm checking the both the condition. If it is not blank and if it is not a number, then show me the message. Let's refresh. Now usually if it is a blank, then it will not throw an error. If it is a blank, it will not throw an error. But if I enter here, let's say I'm entering the empty 5009. Click on this save. Now it is going to show me the error saying that here, please enter the account number only number. So that means I need to enter only the number. If I enter only the number, it will accept. Now let's say scenario says, if it is a now let's say scenario says account number either throw me the error when it is blank when it is blank or throw me the error when it is not number when it is not number. Now, in this scenario, we need to show the error message. Now, in this case, what we will do? Show me the error message if it is a blank or if it is a not number. The same validation rule, how do we show it? Yeah, we need to remove that not and that not should be removed. When it is a blank, when it is a blank is nothing but I'm going to remove this not condition. And uh, what else we are going to change it?
here it is not number so uh, this is fine right not number but here we are using the and condition and condition is nothing okay but... or okay or we need to use or here so we need to use the or condition So we have a or condition. Let's use the or condition. And then check the syntax. Click on save. So here, click on this null. I'm going to save this. Did you show me the error? As well as if it is a not number. I have entered this value and click on save. Then it is showing me the error, right? So that means if it is a null, as well as if it is a not number, show me the error. So this is how in order to validate, so what are the data that you wanted to validate? So that means you can make a field is, what is the data needs to be entered in this can be controlled by the validation rule. So you can control what is the data needs to be entered on the specific field. Specific field, you can control it. Now, for example, right now, this logic is working on the existing report. Assume that this logic only should be working on the new reports, not on the existing reports. Now, what are the validation rules that we have implemented? It should work only on the existing report, only on the new record, not on the existing report. What are the record I'm creating for the new one? What are the record I'm creating? For example, if I'm creating the record, let's say Walmart. And let's give some phone number and mom. Now click on this save. So now it is this validation rule is firing on the account number on the new record as well as the existing record. But the scenario that I need is this validation rule only should fire on the new record, not on the existing record. It should not fire on the existing record, only fire on the new record. Now, how can I handle this? So, if I want to fire this validation rule only on the new record, not on the existing record. In that case, we have a function. Function is called easy. Function is called easy. So, what we have to do? We have to use if it is a is new. That means if it is a new record. If it is a new record and what are the conditions we have it we can use it if it is a new record and if it is not blank if it is a blank and if it is not number show me the error message that means this time it is going to hit the validation rule only on the new record. It will not hit on the existing record. It will not hit on the existing records. Now let's go to the existing record. Detail section. Now let's modify this account number and click on save. It will not hit on the existing record. But if I try to create new record, so let's create a new record here. New Walmart and phone number and parent account number. I'll not enter the account number and click on is save. So what is happening? It is hitting the validation error on the new record. So validation errors always hits on the new record. Because the logic that I have written is, I have specified here is new. When I specify is new, it is always fires on the 
new record. If you want the validation rule should be firing on the existing as well as the new record, then remove this new. Right, so similarly another scenario for the validation rule. Let's say here on the opportunity, let's go to the opportunity record. So when we go to the opportunity record, so in the opportunity record, now we have a detail section and in the detail section, whenever the amount is, if the amount is less than 1000, if amount is less than 1000 and if our stage is closed. If our stage is closed on or a closed lost and the amount is less than 1000. In that case, it should not allow the, it should not allow to save. Mm -hmm. That means whenever we reach to the closed own, the amount should be, it should be maximum higher. Right? It should have a higher amount. Right? In that case, if you want to cross verify. So basically, what we are going to do is create a validation rule. on the opportunity when amount is is less than thousand dollars and stage name if the stage name is either it is a closed home or Either it is a closed own or it's a closed own or negotiation review. Or it is a negotiation review. Then we need to show the validation. Show the validation rule saying that amount should be greater than 1000. Amount should be greater than 1000. So we do not want to close any opportunity which is a less than 1000. If you are closing the opportunity, then it should be, the amount should be the greater than 1000. So this is the validation rule that we are going to create it. So we're creating the validation rule. First, we need to go to the opportunity object. So in this opportunity object, go to the validation rule and click on the new. The first thing we are going to check, this is a amount validation, amount validation. Now we are going to insert, so we, we are going to insert here, let's say, insert amount, and if it is a less than thousand, and so we need to have an AND condition. Both the conditions should be true. So let's insert the AND condition. Now in the AND condition, first condition is I need to check amount is less than 1000. And next I need to check the stage. What are the stage is this? So stage name, either it is a closed own or negotiation. So I need to check multiple condition here. Stage name is a pick list field, pick list field. So, but I need to check multiple values here. 
So in order to check multiple values, what I'm going to use, usually we will use if condition. If stage name equal to closed own or stage name equal to negotiation review. So instead of going with the if condition, you can also go with the case. Case condition. Case is nothing but where you are providing the expression. Here in this case, expression is nothing but stage name. So we have a stage name here. Let's say stage. And the value for this stage name is, for the first one it is, if it is a closed own, it is a closed own. Result is, if it is a closed one, value, let's give it as a one. And for the result two, for the result two, if the result two is negotiation review, if it is a negotiation review, if it is negotiation review, then we will have a one. Otherwise, by default, display zero. And total output should be a one. When we have a output is a one, that means we have the condition is true. Check this condition. No errors. Let's say here amount should be greater than one means here. Uh, what does one mean here? So if we have a closed own, so the output of if it is a stage name equal to closed own, then output will be one. If stage name equal to negotiation review equal to one. So what will happen now? We have a equal to one we are expecting here. But this said I have a, when it is a stage name closed equal to one, then we are displaying the one. If the stage name equal to negotiation, then we are displaying the one. Otherwise we are displaying the false. Zero. So zero. So here it is one equal to one. So one equal to one. So when it is one equal to one, that means the condition is true. When it is a zero equal to one, the condition is false. So when this condition is false and this amount is less than thousand, right? So when that means we have the output here, it is a zero. Zero, we are getting it. When it is a false, then it will not throw the any validation error. If it is a one means, that means currently the stage is a negotiation. And if the amount is less than thousand, if these two conditions are true, then it will throw an error. Okay. Amount should be greater than thousand. Now let's leave it on the top of the page. Click on save. The opportunity. Dell opportunity. And go to the detail section. And it does not have any amount. So I'm changing the stage to the negotiation review. Click on the save. Nothing happened. Now if I'm changing to the closed phone, click on save. Now nothing happened. Let's see the another value. Let's say value proposition. Nothing happened. Is the validation is true? Yes, it is true. Close to but the amount is, uh, okay. Amount is less than 1,000. Yeah, if it is a less than thousand, say I'm going to place it here. We can save, and then I'm going to change the value. Close or click on a save. I did not. What is the reason? No, actually, if it is less than 1,000, it should show an error. Yes, it is less than 1,000. So we have a $34. Right, the condition. Uh, it, sh 
yeah it should show error right it, it should not accept it should accept only if it is greater than thousand it is greater than yeah if it is greater than yeah it should this is correct now if it is below thousand it should not accept we should get that uh, message right so right now i'm changing the value to 30 right now if it is thousand less than thousand right and the case condition is stage name equal to either it is a closed own or negotiation now i'll say here equal to save should it show the error message or not it should show error message mm -hmm. Then negotiation with me. Check the syntax. On the say let's click on this edit. Click on save. Let me try a different way. No, I'll keep this code aside. But testing it, instead of a case, what I'll do is I'm taking the another condition here. No, I'll say here is pick value. Insert is pick value. The pick list field is Insert stage name. Yeah, I understood. So we need to take the API value of the pick list field values. So let's go to the object and fields and relationship. Let's take the stage. Stage name. And let's say here, let's take the negotiation review. Text value is click on check syntax. No error, click on save. If it is amount is less than 1000 and is pick one stage name should we uh, keep it in uh, uh, quotes stage name yes stage name we should not keep it as a in the quotes stage name is a field name okay now let's go here refresh To click on the detail section, $34 and stage name is closed on. Let's change this to the negotiation with you. Click on your save. Now it is showing the amount should be greater than 1000. Now if I give a amount higher, it will accept. Now this is working fine. Now let me change back the previous code. I'll take here so instead of is pick well I'm going to use a case case function but here I'm going to use the pick list field values in names stage let's say here here we have a own API name. Close own. And next, 
the other one which we have negotiation review. Negotiation review and click on the check syntax. Now click on save. Let's go to the opportunity. Now I'll update this. Value to below 1000. Now stage is negotiation. Review, click on your save. Now it is showing me the error. Now closed all. Also, it is going to show me the error. Right, if I change back to the another value proposition, then it is going to accept it. The reason the, we were getting the error is whatever these values we have taken, these values are not same as the API name. So we should always prefer the API name. So when we are preparing it, the pick list field values, we should take the API names of the field values. Then it will accept it. So like this, in the validation rule, we have a different options. Is blank, which we have already seen. And the use case is, no, account number, which we have already seen, the account number for the is blank. So implement a homework, create a validation rule on the opportunity object to make sure the tracking number value should be required. So create a tracking number field. This is a custom field, which this is already seen. Another homework, create a validation rule to make the amount value is more than 20,000 for each opportunity report. Irrespective of the stage name, every time amount value should be always greater than 20,000 for each opportunity report. Create a validation rule on the opportunity object to make sure the tracking number value should be present for the new records. Right on the opportunity also create a new field which is called as a tracking number and the tracking number should be available for every new record. And create a validation rule on the hiring manager object to prevent the user to change the hiring manager record name on the existing record, not on the new record. Create a validation rule on the account to validate the phone, email, rating values. And create a validation rule on the account object to make sure the data is available on the billing address on the new record. When we say billing address, billing address, you will take the fields as a billing state, billing city, billing country, and billing state. So this is only for the new reports, not for the existing report. And next, create a validation rule on the opportunity to make sure the closing date captured while updating the opportunity stage is closed. And the field is closed state, data type is state. And the next, create a validation rule on the account object to validate the account number is numeric and it should not be none. This is what we have seen right now. Next, we have a few more validation rules are there. So one is on the account object, validate the phone number. And next, create a validation rule on the account object. This is already covered, so it, it is not required. Create a validation rule to prevent the status from being changed back to the new if case is already open. So if case, is, case status is already in progress, case status is already in progress. And if you are changing from in progress to new, then it should not allow. So basically, if you go to the case object, you go to the case object, case. Now let's open the case object. When you open the case object, like if the status is already in progress, Assume that status is in the working. Now, when you are changing from the working to new, when you are changing from the working to new, it should not allow. It should not allow this. So right now, by default, it is allowing it, but it should not allow. And the next one is create a validation rule to prevent the user from editing the opportunity product after an, after an opportunity is closed. Once the opportunity is closed, 
do not allow them to edit the opportunity product. So these are the different homework and we have a trial head. And I have provided the detailed information of the validation values, the reference link which I have provided. So that's about the validation link.